what's our objective here? What are we hoping uh, to really talk about and discuss? It's really understanding the changing landscape that's going on and why visual storytelling is so important. And I'm going to share some uh, do-it-yourself tips. All right? So storytelling. Certainly there's words. There's putting passion behind those words. And certainly the visuals, the photos, the videos that we're using as well. Beyond that, we know about technology and social media. Remember technology is supposed to make our lives so much easier, <laughs> right? Is it easier or is it more complicated, right? And as we're trying to reach our target audiences, whoever that may be as a business, how do you reach them when we have so many you know, channels, everything going on? So there's some photos and videos. I'll share that. You'll see a lot of text, but I've got a lot of visuals here as well to help support this and some videos. Uh, so hopefully the videos all play, uh, but they should. Uh, but we'll talk about the good and the bad. So visual storytelling is not new. We're talking, let's go back about 32,000, 34,000 years ago. By the way, I just learned that BCE, does anyone know what BCE is? Before the Common Era. Yes, politically correct. I didn't know that. Can't use BC or AD or what have you. It's politically correct. But as we know that visual storytelling actually has evolved. It's not new. It continues to uh, evolve. How many are on Instagram, have Instagram account? Anyone? All right. And you love it. OK. Better than the cave paintings? A little more accessible and no bats. OK, good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so let's do a quick pulse check here. How many like to read books? Oh, Lynn loves you and other authors, right? How many actually like to watch movies? And how many would prefer to watch the movie based on the book rather than read the book? One. And are you disappointed that the movie's not like the book? I usually I'll watch the book first and then I'll read the I mean, I'll watch the movie and then okay. read the book, so I don't get disappointed. Okay, interesting. So how many actually use visuals in their outreach and from a business standpoint of what you're doing in your storytelling? Okay. So I'm going to dive a little deeper as we move along about what that actual uh, visuals are you're using. Anybody gather customer testimonials? Back to what Lynn said about brand ambassadors. Okay. And how are those being used? Are they written? Right now, mine are written. Okay. All written? They're all written. I keep on asking for a video. Right. Think about that. Does the passion come through as much in that written word? It could. You love to read books. You know that movies and other things can be made from that. But imagine if you were to get that passion from that brand ambassador, whoever that customer testimonial is. Imagine if you had that coming through their body language. So these are the things you need to really start thinking about, is how do you then take what you normally do and take that to the other level of really being more photo and visual? How many here would say they're not very creative? I am one of those. All right, we have a minority, a big minority. <laughs> All right, two of us, three of us. OK, we're going to be the number ones, the small group, but we're number one. Everyone else consider themselves creative? Yep, OK, so you're going to be the number twos. So our few number ones that are over here, what I want you to do, I want you to describe your car. We're going to have each of you go individually here. So describe your car. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Let me uh, say an example. Teen at a sports car. It's black. It's cool looking. Got a nice exterior. It goes fast, right? It's kind of how you describe things, right? All right. So all those number twos in there, you creative folks, all of you. Uh, who wants to volunteer about describing your car? Yes. My car's a jitney, and I, <laughs> that's what I call it, it's the jitney, and um, it's blue, and it's perfect because it gets me to do everything outside that I want to do. I can put, I put a full-size snowblower in it. It's perfect. All right, paint some pictures here. <laughs> Who else? I drive a shiny black Audi A4. 
I love my car. It's got all wheel drive, so it gets you through the snow no matter what, which is my favorite thing in the world because I'll be flying past trucks <laughs> in the middle of the winter on the highway. Very good. You hear that? You're starting to paint a picture? It's got a provocative exterior. It's carbon fiber structure, reduces weight. You know, zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds. I used to have a car that was zero to 60 in about 15 minutes. Um, but <laughs> uh, it was a 76 Chevette with no floorboard in my first car. So um, it's the ultimate for performance driving, right? So start thinking about what are your keywords. And again, building off what Lynn said earlier about your story, your pitch, what is it that you want, right? Now imagine we have this visual, okay? So if you want to close your eyes, you can. But I'm going to describe this car and see if this is the same sort of thing. Ready? Throwing off the constraints of tradition, our world-class engineers started over from scratch to build a revolutionary lightweight vehicle with the aesthetic impact and the performance prowess worthy of the Stingray emblem. Okay, do you know what we're describing? Correct. Yeah, okay. I hate the word revolutionary. It's one of the overused ones, like innovative, but it's in there, and this is right off their web, right? The press writes about it. In a word, stunning. The next leap forward. The car does everything perfectly. You see the others, right? Right? You start to give that passion. It's mind bending, nothing short of mind bending. So now there's the car. Thousand words, right? So then what would a video be? Who else says Google? Did someone say Bing? I heard YouTube. Number one? Google's number one. Number two? YouTube. Who, of course, Google owns YouTube now, right? So, second largest search engine. What does that mean? People are going to YouTube and searching for content. Are you on there? Can you be found? If you go on Google and search, there will be a lot of YouTube-related materials you know, that, are that are coming up in searches. Okay? It's about having a presence there. Okay? Throw a bunch of stats at you here. Yeah, if you're, you're welcome to get a copy of this presentation so you can see all that if that's of interest. But think of these things. It processes more than 3 billion searches a month. Okay? Fastest growing video sharing website in the world at the moment. We know how technology changes. So I'm not in any way recommending you just do everything and go on YouTube because things change and evolve as we know. There, not too long ago, people didn't even know what Pinterest was and next thing you know, people are all on Pinterest or trying to figure out what they should do. To this day, people are still wondering, should I get on social media? Should I launch? It's like the days of websites. Should we do a website, right? Where should your presence be? Other things, pretty scary. If YouTube were a country, it would be the largest in the world after China and India. Why? Look at all the people that are on it. You've got one billion unique monthly visitors. That's nearly one out of every two internet users are on YouTube. So if your business needs to be out there and you want to get out there, you need to have a presence. And again, it could be photo or video in some way. So I'm going to give you some uh, data here. This is from a study that was done by PR News and PR Newswire, 452 communications professionals. So this gives you a sense of what communicators are doing, people that, whether in your own business or people like Lynn and myself and others, about what we're doing and encouraging our clients to do. Okay? 79% of PR pros agree that video is not being used nearly as enough, enough as it should be, right? But that's about to change. That's what they're saying, 79% underutilized, okay? Look at this, 76% say next year, 2014, they anticipate using visual storytelling to, to, to increase it. It's going to be there, okay? It's a huge shift. 
So are you ready for that transition? Are you ready to go there? There will be some tips about how to get there. It's just more surface, not going to be able to get too much in a deep dive during this session, but there are some initial things you need to start thinking about. Anybody have an idea what's driving the most engagement in social media? So we're talking if a post goes on Facebook, as an example. What do you click? Think about personally for yourself. Okay, we'll wait for the mic there. What do you personally look at on Facebook or social media and say, yep, like it, share it? Uh, either things that are useful to me and my, I would guess I would say like target audience or and or like friend base or, or interesting. Um, things that are funny or sales or some sort of incentive, those things. How about text versus Thank images? You. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Number one is photos, 37% drive the most engagement, second is video, third is articles, then we get into infographics, and then audio. Okay, that's what's being shared. Think about your business. Can you put a stat out there about what you're doing, about, uh, I'm going back to the Buy Michigan now, if for every, and I'm not gonna get the stat right, but every, you know, $10 spent locally of what impact that could have on the economy, Buy Michigan now, right? If that were an example, that little image I will guarantee it, and so go ahead and use it if you want, right? On social media, uh, is going to be shared. There's going to be a passion of people that want to buy Michigan products, and they've realized, wow, only $10 and what impact that's going to have. Chances are they're going to like it, comment on it, comment on it and share it. Imagine then if there was a video link to that that now went to more about those Michigan products. And of course, there's links going to the Buy Michigan Now website, as an example. What that can do. Yes? Yeah, and we didn't talk before, just so you know. <laughs> we represent leader dogs for the blind. Puppies, people love puppies now. People maybe cat owners versus dog lovers. Here's one example, just posted not too long ago. 354 people like this, 41 shares. Okay, and this is all about leader dogs like ProPlan. ProPlan actually donates dog food uh, for the leader dogs for the blind. Okay, little puppies there. What great product placement for them, and it gets shared. This is just shared off of the Leader Dogs for the Blind Facebook post. When that gets shared, how many people was, then shared from that sent to me on Facebook. And I so didn't know on. it was for Leader Dogs because it didn't, the top part had been cut out. Right. And so, and they shared it with me, and, and I've shared it right. since then because I love the puppies and I've had a golden retriever. How many uh, read, heard, clicked on the epic fail twerk video of the girl that was twerking and then landed in the fire, you know, with the candles? All right, I've got it at the end. I can show it. I was not sure if it's politically correct, but we'll come back to it. Okay, what's a twerk? Okay, so we'll have to... <laughs> I'm not going to demonstrate it. Yes, Miley, Miley Cyrus raised more awareness about. But I bring that up because it was shared and viewed about 13 million times. But I won't reveal the rest of it. We'll get it to the end there, but I'll explain why, right? It was video. It was someone, you know, problem, fail, epic fail. Sometimes we also thrive on that bad things, all right? Not to say that's what you want to talk about in your business, but I'm just saying where people's mindsets are and what they're doing, okay? So what's holding you up? What's holding up PR uh, communicators from actually communicating this out and getting on with, the, with these visual elements? Time, budget, resources. We understand that. But what investment and opportunity in your business are you missing because you're not taking the time or spending the money. And really to reanalyze maybe your business of where you are spending it, of maybe some of the traditional channels that maybe are not benefiting you, okay? So here's some truths and facts. Without this video production and this digital strategy, and it's important to stress strategy, not just putting a whole bunch of videos together and putting them out there, but be strategic in what you're doing your overall internet visibility to clients and customers will be muted. You're not gonna be found, you're not gonna be seen, 
you're competing with others out there in the same space, with the photographer, the studio manager over here, photography is so important. Sharing those visuals of these individuals at weddings or uh, different events, right? That's a visual thing. Are you gonna buy photography, a, a photographer, if you haven't seen their product? That's an obvious. But in your business, can you take some visual of what you're doing, whatever it may be, and share that story? Again, back to what Lynn said about that heart, coming from the heart, the heart to heart. What is that story? Can you capture it visually in some way and share that out? Okay. So when you're doing this visual, video, whatever it may be, should it be developed for PCs or Macs? Uh, for apples, right? Uh, mobile, should it, should it be both? Absolutely. Right now, most videos are viewed on PCs, but mobile devices, the views on mobile devices have tripled from 2011 to 2012. Even your website and other sort of visuals need to be where you can read it on an iPad or a mobile device. And still to this day, there are many companies that do not have those type of readers. So their website that looks great when you go to Internet Explorer or Google or Safari or whatever it is, Google Chrome, when you get it on a mobile device, it's not optimized for that. And you might be losing customers or potential customers because they get frustrated. Why? We don't have that attention span. We just, we want to move on. Oh, it's not working. It's not loading. That's it. Okay. It needs to be a destination. Again, not just putting all this video content up there. But it has to, your YouTube home needs to be this destination where people want to come to and have an experience, not just a storage facility. Okay? You want to create content that's unique, compelling, entertaining. What's your call to action? What, do you, what sort of schedule do you have for this channel? You're just going to put a, a video out and wait a couple weeks, a month? We all know about SEO and uh, or are certainly somewhat aware of it. Uh, there's also a lot of the algorithms for your company and searches to come up. For YouTube in particular, if you put a video out and wait a few weeks and then put another one out and then you maybe don't do any and then all of a sudden you put a ton or you say, oh, we just heard Rich present. We're going to go and we're going to take out all our videos. We're going to put them all out at once. That does not help you in search. There needs to be some consistency and strategy to it, not just putting it all at once. They could actually see it as spam, okay? Those algorithms are always changing. So again, it's important to have that strategy. Uh, one other thing that was on there, you gotta captivate your viewer in the first 15 seconds. If you don't get them right away, don't get them hooked, what do we do? We click out, we go to the next thing. Talk about the SEO. So here are some do-it-yourself tools for capturing and posting. This is actually a colleague of mine. This is a DSLR camera. It's very interesting. We will walk in, and the video team here will know this, we'll walk in with cameras that you see here. And they're like, ooh, you know, you're like from the television station, you got the big camera and the whole bit. We walk in with this camera, they think we just bought it off the shelf at Best Buy and it's not great. I don't claim to be an expert in all the details of that, but the quality of this, and it's more film-like, it is definitely better than some of these larger cameras. It's just like any technology, right? The big cell phones, right, that came down and smaller, and then, of course, now we're getting larger again with uh, iPads and other tablets, right? So here's some things for you. I mean, that can be a little pricey, but just a smartphone is ideal. They have Facebook apps on it, Twitter apps. You can take a video photo, you can automatically right away post. Um, the beginning of the session, I snapped a photo of Lynn up here speaking. I right away sent it to Facebook, posted it, um, and if, before I even closed out of it, I already had three likes that came in. And then during the break, I saw Lynn saw it and she liked it and, you know, who knows what's being shared. So. That is so convenient, not, oh, I'll wait, I'll get it back to a laptop, and I'll do it at some point in time. It's in real time, and that's very easy. External microphone is so important. Do you remember the flip cams? Okay. They didn't have external mics. Uh, well, they, they had something, but not where you could plug it in and have an actual microphone. 
and as a result, you had some not so great audio. Okay, so you could have all the great story you want to tell, but if you can't hear them, what good is it? Okay, so you got to keep those sort of things in mind. So I'm going to show you some uh, do-it-yourself video knots. This is primarily on video, but you're going to also learn some things about photos, about how to frame people. I wanted to talk to you today about our product. Our product is going to be number one in the industry. It's going to be used industry-wide. Product quality, I think, is the most important thing in this industry you want. So let me just reemphasize. It's really important to have a high quality product. A lot of people are worried about the economic future of America, and but I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't be worried. I'm here at the Small Business Conference. Um, I'm going to be blogging throughout the day, keeping giving updates on what's going on and who's here. And Style is critically important to the perception of the vehicle. And this car's got style. It's got nice curves, it's got sleek lines, and it's got LED headlights and a grill that pop. Style is critically important to the perception of a vehicle, and this car's got style. We have nice curves, sleek lines, and LED headlamps and a grill that really pop. CS Industries started in um, 1986, and we started off as... The future of CS Industries is, is, is very bright. Um, we're going to new technologies, and I think we're really progressing. I'm going to be doing a product demonstration of these speakers. And I think that's why you should buy these speakers. Today we're going to talk about finances. One, budget. You have to know how much money you can spend. So you get the point here, right? And that's I don't like being behind a podium, but that's why I do stand here, because I'm looking here, because otherwise what happens is I start talking like this. Other guidelines that you can keep in mind, since now you're all going to be the experts as you go back, say, oh, don't do this video, don't want, don't want tree head, right? Uh, use a tripod if possible. You've got cranes here, you've got the, the tripod, tripod. That makes a huge difference, right? Capture the action. What's going on? Not all the stuff necessarily behind, but what is happening? Don't just do a still photo if a video makes sense. And if you are doing a photo, can you capture that action in some way? What's going on? The, I stress this again about the landscape versus portrait. I won't name names, but we had a client who had a, uh, an event, and they sent us the video and said, here, can you edit this for us? We got it. Port uh, an event, and they sent us the video and said, here, can you edit this for us? We got it. Portrait mode. So all you get is all the black, you know, dead space on the other side and this. And we edited, sent it back, it goes, what, what's this? It's the way you shot it for us, right? So keep that in mind. It's easy to do, oh, I gotta get the whole person. No, okay? Keep it in focus. Make sure you're identifying what is the focal point that you wanna get in that shot. Try to capture faces. A lot of times we see photos, Posted, backs of heads, sides of, you know, heads, whatever the case is. I'm going to turn to our photographer over here. What's the rule of thirds? You want to keep your subject matter in um, either the center or want the left or the right equally in thirds. Um, you don't want it way far over to the left or the right so that they, uh, there's no room on the edge of the person. Um, you, got, you kind of just have to think of everything like a composition. How would this look on your wall, even if it's a group of people in a, in a room like this? How would this look on my wall if I take it from this angle or that angle and where the people are placed? So typically, I would say most people would probably put that tree dead center, right? Usually. But this, the rule of thirds, horizontally and vertically divided into three, and at those cross points is where your main subject should be. You can also see the horizon is there. It doesn't mean it has to be exact but close to it. And what this is, is more likely to generate some interest and passion and energy. It gets you to also start thinking differently how you shoot that um, and how your audience is gonna respond. 
Again, I don't claim to be the uh, photographer expert in this, but these are the things that definitely come into mind and it could help and be the difference between something that's shared, not shared, uh, whether a, a television station, because we, we shoot video and B-roll and may get that to a television station whether they use it or not. Make sure you get permission. If you've got people in the shots, have a release form uh, that you're going to be able to use it because you might put it up on social media. Uh, especially if there's kids and others involved, you've got to make sure a parent or guardian sign off. Um, avoid taking pictures of irrelevant objects. Stuff going on in the background, try to bring to a different area. Certainly confidential information or processes. Uh, for a client in my other life, we uh, saw on social media that someone shot some video with inside a manufacturing facility and posted it. It was no big deal. It was their daily job. It was actually showing future product that's being produced and they thought nothing of it because they were so close to it. We saw it and made sure our client knew about it and of course the employee was told we do have a policy, it's against that, you violated that policy and they were warned. Some companies don't have policies so you have to define a policy too of what is acceptable. Also health and safety. Another client did this video shoot we were not involved with and it was about a sign going up on a building. They had just taken over this new building and they wanted to do the sign. Great idea to do time-lapse photography, show that whole sign coming together, the workers bringing it up. Everything looked great until it got to the editing. And they looked and some people didn't have their safety helmets on. If they were to post that, there could have been a violation. I mean, they did wrong but even having the video of it and showing it. And then the communicator, the corporate communications person, contacted the company and said, you were in violation. You should have had your helmets and you were not you know, dressed appropriately. And they got, as I understand, there was a motion of some sort to be fined for that. Okay? So be aware of those sort of things. You may not think twice about it, but especially I've done a lot of work in manufacturing facilities or if they don't have the right safety equipment on, the glasses, the ear plugs, all of that could become an issue, especially as you start putting it out on social media. Yes? One of my clients um, in the entertainment industry, I was at an event where they were DJing it, and I used my you know, iPhone, got some video, and thought, I'm the PR person. I'm getting all kinds of great footage and stuff, so I put it out there. Well, little did I know that the DJ who was hired to do that gig had his daughter, who was a teenager, tween, um, who was wearing a same, the shirt from the company and was sort of working, and it's totally against company policy, and the guy got canned. So it was great to see that they were, you know, causing lots of energy and everybody was enjoying the company, but... Um, you know, and I'm not the only one who would do the video. All of us do that. Like, oh, look at my kid. And, you know, the client said, well, who is that girl? And I'm like, you didn't hire her? She wasn't part of your team? And so you got to be aware because everybody has a camera now. Everybody. That's a good point. Thank you. So here are some do-it-yourself videos. Yes, you have a question? So I have a lot of events where we um, take photos and video and... I was at a big event in California, and I was walking down the beach, and I saw a sandwich board, like a sign that said, we're shooting a movie here, and by your presence being here, you're giving us permission to use your image. If you don't want to be in the movie, then like get off the beach. I'm paraphrasing. And then at the same, very same weekend, at this event where there's a couple thousand people there, when you went to get your name tag, there was a sign saying, we're going to be taking video, and if you don't want to be in the video, you need to like let us know and stand in a certain place and all that. We were never giving signatures to give permission. So my point is, we used the same sign last weekend for an event and didn't get signatures. We said, if you don't want to be in it, then you need to let us know, and we'll put a big smiley face on you. So you're saying written permission is a must? Well, when you start getting into huge groups like that, then it's different, uh, where you do some sort of warning acknowledgement of that. I would take it to the next level though and do a verbal as well. Because when you're signing in, how many signed in downstairs, got your name badge? Did you look at everything on that table? I didn't look at anything. <laughs> right? So you probably didn't. And then someone can come back and say, we were not warned. Right? So a verbal helps. Uh, Lynn mentioned, right, at the beginning of this uh, about the video. 
as well that's going on in here. And if you do not want to be part of it, to, to yeah, don't ask questions, step aside, right? So, but when you're doing more individuals, one-on-ones, two, three people going into a place, and uh, our company represents 40% of our businesses, uh, nonprofits, cause-related. Uh, Focus Hope, Skillman Foundation, Leader Dogs for the Blind, uh, Easter Seals, Michigan, there's, there's a number of them. We're usually talking about people, um, kids that, need, that are, are up for adoption. We represent Holy Cross uh, Children's Services. There are certain legal things where we cannot even videotape a child, especially that person that has not, that's up for adoption, because who is their parent or guardian? They don't have one, right? So are they, so there's, a, there's some real intricacies, and that's sometimes where it's better to get a lawyer involved. I know we have a couple lawyers here that might know some people in that. Um, but those are the things that, if they're underage, it gets a little tricky. Uh, but if there's a parent there, a guardian, it's better you get a signature if you can, and some sort of release form, so just in case anything comes back to you. Because the last thing you want to do is post all this and all this fanfare, and then you're told to take it down. And if there's any legal action. Okay? Yes? Yep. Yeah, I actually learned about that the hard way. Um, our, our band played at Weber's Inn. We've been playing there for six years. Okay? And one time I had my photographer there. And he's taking pictures, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're posting him. And somebody freaked out. And I mean, freaked out, went to management. Like, legal had to get involved. It was so horrible. And we're, we're joking around. We're like, is somebody here having an affair or something and doesn't want their, you know, like, but how would, how would you address that? I mean, there's certain events where it's like, obviously, I have to get a release. Like, we do a, an event for closed head injury patients every year. And it's a wonderful, touching event. But unfortunately, I can't post any pictures from it, right. you know. How, how do I get around that? Because we are constantly putting up video photos with, like, our crowd in it. I mean... Again, announcing it in advance for those that can. If there's a little card or something that they have it, they see it, they understand it. You may not actually get a signature on some of those, but do everything you can to at least make them aware. I mean, people need to know there's cameras, there's video. Even if these cameras were not in the room right now, any one of you could take my picture, right? If Aren't there laws for, like, especially in journalism, I mean, if you're in a public space taking photos, you don't... You don't, I mean, you don't need to get permission for that. Right. I mean... Because the, some of the differences there, that's a news is that element. For, okay, so right? that's for media. We're talking about companies here, and you're posting it to promote your business, and it's more advertising, marketing. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so, you know, there are some copyright issues and legal things. So, you know, if there's real concern, there are those that specialize in this. But just use your best judgment of, you know what, I'm just going to over-communicate it. I'm going to make it well known. We are taking photos, we're taking video. If you don't want to be in this, this could show up on you know, social media, YouTube. Give people that option as best you can. I, I was with a group of people that were actually coming here to Walsh Business College and we knew in advance that it was going to, we didn't know in advance it was going to be videotaped. And when she arrived and was just right, signing the release, she says, I can't be in this. And we said, well, why? She says, no, I can't be. And she put everything down and walked out. Um, because of work that she's done in the past, she had to, she signed non-confidentiality agreements and she can't be on, she can't be videotaped with in other people's things because of that. Yeah, my two daughters, I have two daughters in high school, a freshman and a senior, and uh, they're a school that's got technology and they have iPads. And I guess there's something with um, some Apple award, you might know or have heard of it before, but we had to sign a release that they could be videotaped, any of that could be used. The whole thing is about the use of these iPads in the classroom environment. And so everyone had to sign off on it. And you don't know, your kid could be used, not be used or not. And it's, it's, it's scary, but as long as you know what you're, where, uh, what, you know, what you're up against, um, and be aware of that. I would just say communicate and over communicate and you know people might say okay I get it but at least you're hopefully covered for that. In this case I won't play that video he's talking about it but you don't really see much 
Now in this one, you see what he's really looking at. So those are the sort of things that you need to, to keep in mind, okay? Um, or if you don't want to do it yourself, you can seek professional help. We all need professional help um, in one way or the other, right? So this is a company, Henkel. How many of you have ever heard of the company Henkel? A few of you. What do you know them for? Anything come to mind? All right. We represent them for automotive. They do a lot of adhesives and sealants for the auto industry. Really exciting stuff. <laughs> but they're a $21 billion company. Might be in the restroom. Dial soap, Henkel. Right guard, Henkel. Uh, Purex, laundry soap. Loctite, you know, super glue. It's all Henkel. Okay? We have this whole lighten up campaign that we do for them again for automotive. Huge company, but anyway. You would imagine maybe they're a little stodgy, what have you. Not that they are, but they wanted to get out this message about lightening up technology to lighten up vehicles to make them lighter. If you're lighter vehicles, you have better fuel economy. So here's one example, maybe a traditional shot, but you notice how it's framed, then we try to get a little creative. Again, not necessarily what they're saying, but how it's framed, use of animation, try to make it light hopefully engaging. Like, what's this about? Trying to engage people right away, or else they could click Resin out. Resin transfer molding is a new leading technology and like, oh, that is being head. incorporated <laughs> into the, the industry today. <laughs> right? Uh, I was duped, misled. Having that material or using the But that's what we would have probably just started with, and that's all we would have had. But notice how it's framed. In the needs in the automotive right? Industry. It's not so important having to see what's in the back, incorporating B-roll, incorporating other things that at least give you a sense of how he's talking and what he's talking about or carbon fibers. That ability to easily wet in also improves the amount of time and how quickly you can produce a product. So here's a For visual. Example, if you use the mesh material and you applied water to that material. Applying water, the water would versus honey. Flow into the fiber versus that gets absorbed right away. If you took a right high or heavy viscosity material like honey and put that on the fiber, it would not easily wet into those fibers. And notice what this is done on. <laughs> it's got the website address. It's got their Twitter handle, <laughs> right? It's branding, right? Lighten up, everything, okay? Now here's another one. They just had a sales conference that's just uh, wrapping up. Just have a little fun. This is a green screen. Simplify. I chose a clock for my object that represents improving our time to market. Globalize. I selected a heart. A heart can represent passion, perseverance, strength, and determination. Inspire. We've all seen those motivational posters and pictures, and I actually have one that hangs above my desk. And this is what inspires me on a daily basis when I come to work. It's and really to get it. their sales team Outperform. pumped up before this conference. The object that I chose really isn't an object. It's the people that uh, we brought in for a sales training program. The reason why I brought them was they're going through a transformation. Simplify. Globalize. Inspire. Outperform. This is our culture. This is who we are. That we can do this. going on right now so and I said green screen but that was not that was just more white in the back there but we could have put anything behind them if we wanted to right okay and now we have as you see on this side this is their whole blog they have videos they have all the things tied to it so things all start to integrate right so not just doing video for video sake but that there's actual integration okay um, I'm not gonna play this video but here's another one this is Meritor as an example where they wanted video shot we put it up on their social media. They attended a trade show. They had video taken, as you see in the bottom right, video taken of this guy. And if you see in the background here, uh, this is actually video from this shot that was done, playing, looping at their trade show. So we just didn't do it for social. We did it here. Media interviewed. This actually ran on military.com with this interview and the B-roll that we shot and all integrated together, right? 
So one thing that we shot that was able to have multiple uses for it. Okay? It's also a video as they're going into the military to talk about their product and what it can do. They're presenting it to the Army and, and others to show here's what we, you know, what our capabilities are and how our product is a differentiator. Okay? What so we shot at the Ford Proving Grounds Humvee out in American Romeo. This is Protec Series 30 High Mobility Independent Suspension System. Again, framing this today, how that is. Adding two brand new electronic systems from Meritor Defense's product portfolio: Smart Flow Central Tire Inflation System and Drive They're Command headquartered in Troy. Electronic Drive Train Control. The global Operations. The Smart Flow Central Tire Inflation System it allows the driver to change tire pressures according to the terrain that he's maneuvering. We allow the driver to control all four tires. So what happens normally the is these time. vehicles the have a tough time getting up in certain you watch environments, climbing up which is a actually pretty scary to know that that's the case out so there. So when the driver pushes a button, you can actually see the tires deflate, and you can see the tire footprint getting, getting wider as the tire deflates. And then they are able to go up because of that. So it's on demand as they need it, be able to push that. So military is very interested in that technology. And that was able to show it rather than say, oh, we got this great technology. If you're stuck, you push this, what? To actually see it and experience it. Okay? So I mentioned earlier, rules is what I'm asking you now. What rules? Because here's the worst twerk fail ever where the girl catches on fire. You did. 13 million views. Okay? Because everything goes out the window at this point. It's like, because actually we got duped. Because the reality is, Jimmy Kimmel fooled the internet, and it ran all over the news. It was talked about on The View. She's a stunt woman. But they didn't push it out to media or anything. They posted it on YouTube soon after Miley Cyrus became a little more famous recently for twerking. Right? And what ended up happening was, it, as you even see here, 16 million views here when they showed the real, the rest of the story. Okay, so I'm gonna show you two of them. Here's the first one, 13 million views. Oh, of course, we gotta do the ad. But good opportunity for you. Lim, how am I doing on time? Okay, just finish. Okay, here we go. Got the video all set. Let's do it like this. Oh my God. Turn the music up, of <laughs> So, of course. <laughs> so here's all the video that's being the YouTube that's put out there with no fanfare about it. It's just posted, and people started finding it and sharing it and sharing it. News crew after, you know, news team after news team, The View talked about, oh, worst twerk ever. What has Miley Cyrus done, right? How do I make my video go viral? I don't have an answer for you, right? It's hard to tell you what's going to go viral. You don't necessarily set out to make it go viral. This, of course, very well planned. They knew based on the timing. It was actually filmed like two months prior but they didn't release it to act until actually the whole thing came up with Miley Cyrus, so they planned it out that way. But generally speaking, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not about going viral. It's about reading, reaching the right audience that you want to get it to and what is that message. In this case, people may look poorly on Jimmy Kimmel, like I've been duped. But you know what? If you look in the bottom right here, there are 62,000 likes that Jimmy Kimmel did this uh, to 3,000 some dislikes. So people still, even though they got duped, thought, you know what, you got me. That was good. But generally speaking, follow the rules. Don't, you know, dupe people. Be honest in what you're communicating about your product. Okay? All right. So, I mean, that's just it. And look at what it can do. And think about things about for your business. How do you promote it? Of course, maybe not to that extent, but at least getting on board with it. So to, to recap here, we know, no doubt we're competing People are competing, our, our messages are competing for attention really to get your story out there. First, you have to define your story, and then once you have it, how are you getting it out? What channels? Again, words are important, not disputing that, but it's more important how you say it and how you show it, right? Same thing like 
body language, when you're doing presentations. It's more, while well, words are important, it's your tone of voice, and it's also your body language, how you're using your hands and what have you that come into play. Same thing here. You may have the best customer testimonial, but if there's not that excitement, that passion, think again back to the car, as we started off talking about the car, describing it and showing it. You want to be thinking and acting visually in a lot of what you're doing. How can I turn this story, this message, this thing about my business into something I can capture in photo or video? Social, I know uh, they'll be talking tomorrow about that, uh, more about social, but you have to embrace it. Doesn't mean you have to go hog wild and get on everything, but YouTube and other video and photo channels, you should be considering it. People raise their hand for Instagram, don't know if you're using it from a business standpoint. But have a strategy and certainly make it a destination. Just don't post videos up there. Got to get people's attention early or, or their interest. And in many cases, your business will be lost. If they're not interested, they're turned off by it, they just move on. Embrace do-it-yourself tips and don't be a tree head. Okay? <laughs> and consider seeking professional help. <laughs> All right. Any questions you have? And again, we got the microphone roving around here. Not really a question, but I, just a thought. We talked a lot about social media um, with you, and obviously we will more, but I wanted to share a website that I use called Hootsuite. Um, it makes it a lot easier to uh, post multiple, you know, say you have a photo, we do photos often, um, an album or a photo to your Instagram, uh, your email, your Facebook, and, you know, Twitter, all at the same time, same, or from the same page, it shows them all at once. So um, it's, it's a really great tool for people who use social media like that. It's called Hootsuite. Yep. H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E. The, the suite, suite number 222 of the hotel. Yeah. Owl room. Yeah. <laughs> Owl room. Uh, it's really, it serves as a dashboard. Yeah. So for us, we represent multiple clients. Uh, certain account team members represent a few, and so they could have different channels. They could have different clients listed. So you're not, oh, I have to go to Twitter and find something out. It's all coming in there, and you can monitor those and then also respond to those from that. There's, there's several different ones besides Hootsuite, but that's definitely a good point. Yes? If you're going to do a video for your business, what is the, um, what is the time constraints? Because I have no idea what it would, I have no idea how much time you're committing to if you're going to do something like this for your business. And I understand it mm -hmm. depends on how extravagant the video right. is. Right. But can you give me some kind of a range, like what a minimum to a medium, you know? Right. And you know, you've got a good video team here that could probably give you some detail, but generally speaking, you know, you could walk in and say, okay, we're going to do a one, two minute video. That doesn't mean that it's only going to take five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever. It could be a half day shoot. You get in, you check out the location, you see what's there, you need to set lighting, make sure mics are set, everything like that. You can shoot it, depends upon how good of the person is being interviewed and are there multiple people. And again, you don't want just a talking head, you want to get B-roll. So, okay, we just interviewed you and that's great. You told us all about what you're doing, but now we want to go maybe somewhere where you're working, see that, oh, we got to get this angle, that angle. So it really depends on what your ultimate deliverable is and how much B-roll you have. Um, I'll show you one quick video here at the end here. Um, to, I want to, I'll show it from a stand, this is for General Motors. We do a lot of work for GM. Um, obviously bigger budgets, but here's an example. <laughs> you want the Santa Elves, I know. Just all the editing that went into this, okay? And I don't know the actual time frame of how long it took. Okay, here we go. Just think of the editing, the animation, the cutting, everything is huge. Would not say that you would do something like this, but like the Meritor video, that was a full day shoot. And then a lot of editing, probably two days of editing, a day and a half maybe, depending. This is for General Motors to, from a recruitment standpoint, to say GM's a great place to work for IT professionals. And we didn't shoot all of this, we got some video from GM. 
But see, people don't realize what goes into this. You know, what's really involved. Oh, you know, here's their two minute thing. Well, I see you're it done, right? art, and my husband's an artist, and I can right. relate to what he does. People see it simple line, it's beautiful. Right. You know, what did it take? Well, it right. took three years. Right. You know, so I'm just trying to yeah. get an idea of. Yeah, I, I mean, we can talk offline, whatever, if you want to get into some of the more specific details of yeah, like, yeah, okay. But what's your, you know, the key thing is what's your strategy and what are you trying to achieve and what's the story you want to tell through video? Okay. And then define who are those spokespeople or what are those images, what do you want to do? Is it one video that's going to be all encompassing? Is it going to be specifically for an event? Could you do one interview and then slice and dice it to where you have it, where you can use it three, four different uh, messages or whatever over a period of time, right? So, but. A very important question in that there is a time commitment. It's a big time commitment, more than you probably think. And you've got to make sure it's scripted and you've got to allow for the editing process and you're going to get it back. Oh, it doesn't look right, doesn't sound right. You know what? Maybe we're going to need to interview somebody else as well, right? So, whatever you think it is, maybe it's time and a half or double. Okay. Okay? But it's worth doing. Helpful. Okay? All right. Well, thank you again. Definitely.